Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you around this FJR 1300 blood bike. It's very, very cold today. It's only about three degrees out here. So I'm going to get through this video as quickly as I can and go and sit in the house and have a cup of tea. If you're new here, my name's Sarah. I post motorcycle related content on YouTube every Friday. If you like what you see, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below and check back next week for more new content. So this week I'm going to show you around this FJR 1300 blood bike. So I'm aware some of you may not be familiar with the concept of blood bikes. So we are a group of volunteers, uh, stretches across the country that deliver supplies for the NHS out of hours. Those supplies can be blood, components of blood, vaccines, breast milk, samples, basically anything that will fit on the bikes where we will move it out of hours for the NHS. A local group runs 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. 365 days a year, regardless of the weather, regardless of whether it's a bank holiday. There are volunteers on shift moving critical life-saving equipment and products for the NHS riding these blood bikes or driving blood cars. I've been riding with blood bikes now for a few months. Most of my shifts have been on this FJR or one of the other FJRs that our local group has got. We've also got a few F800 BMWs as well. If you're interested in getting involved with blood bikes, get in touch with your local group. I'll put a load of links in the description down below. To be a rider, you will need an advanced rider qualification, either IAM or ROSPA. But there are lots of other volunteer duties as well that you can do if you don't have that advanced rider qualification or you're waiting to get it. So you can be a controller who dispatches the riders who are on shift. Or a lot of groups will allow you to drive their cars without an advanced qualification. But it will depend a little bit on the group that you're in. So if you're interested, get in touch with your local group. They'll tell you exactly what you need to do to get, be a volunteer and for the particular role that you're interested in volunteering for. I highly recommend it, it's a very rewarding thing to do to, and to be able to give something back to the NHS at this time when they are so busy and we're just recovering from the pandemic. I think it's a great thing to do if you can, if you can do it. With all that said, let's show you around this bike, show you what's different about this bike over a standard FJR um, and the sorts of bikes that you could be riding if you decided to join up and volunteer for blood bikes. So this is the FJR 1300 in type approved blood bike spec. Most blindingly obvious thing that's different between this and the standard bike is the colour scheme. So this is the retro reflectives and the high vis panels that you would expect to see on an emergency vehicle. It's also got blood labels in various places around it. The next big obvious difference is this huge rack that's on the back. This is where we will put blood products if we're transporting boxes and also donor breast milk boxes as well. However, just because you see us riding around without anything on the back sometimes doesn't mean that we aren't carrying something urgent, something that's required, because quite often we have small samples and they go in the panniers on the side rather than being strapped to the back. So the next big thing is mirrors are different to standard. We have the larger mirrors on here the large plastic housing. Standard FJL mirrors are on stalks. These ones have the large housing for the light. And it also gives us a little bit more weather protection if we're out and it's pretty torrential rain or it's getting a bit cool. On the topic of it being cold, once the temperature drops below three degrees outside, we can't ride the blood bikes anymore. We have to use the car because we fall under the minimum temperature uh, for the transportation of the blood products outside. So I touched on the blue lights on the bike. These bikes are equipped with blue lights and a siren. Uh, we have them on the mirrors, in the front fairing there, on the side of the fairing, and also on the back above the number plate. The blue lights aren't used regularly. However, they are used if we need to get through road closures or roadworks, um, which can avoid us having to take quite long diversions at times so it can save us some valuable time. But obviously with that huge rack on the back we do lose the pillion seat 
I think it would be very comfortable um, if you were having to sit up on there. Um, although for some reason we do still have the rear pegs on this bike. Uh, I don't think you would uh, enjoy being pillion on here somehow. So in the panniers we carry things like a first aid kit, um, hospital references as well. So if we need to find a specific location, a hospital that we're not familiar with, we've got uh, contacts and maps of each of the hospitals. So underneath all of the livery and the blue lights and the rack, this is a pretty standard FJR 1300. They're pretty heavy bikes to start with. So this particular year, 2018 FJR, weigh in at just under 300 kilos, so around 650 pounds before you add all of the blood bikes gear onto them. So in this trim, they are closer to 320 kilos. So they are a big bike, but they are incredibly well planted on the road and very easy to ride. So diving into the controls then, most of this is pretty standard 2018 FJR 1300 with the exception of that button there which we'll come back to in a minute so right hand handlebar as you would expect run stop switch mode switches between sport and touring mode and a hazard warning light and that's it on that handlebar completely standard as you would expect on an FJR this handlebar, got a few other things, got headlights, cruise control, horn, indicators, screen up and down button, and a menu button at the back just to access different settings on the menu on the, yeah, on the screen there. And then in the middle we just have our Garmin sat nav which we use for finding our way around. On the side here, we've got a little cubby where we can keep things like fuel cards and our personal phones and things when we're riding the bikes. Firing it up, you get the normal FJR animation welcome and the screens all boot up, GPS starts up. We have a nice adjustable screen which really does help keep the wind off. Other than that, it's completely standard FJR territory in here. This bike's done 15,700 miles in the last three years. So it gets a reasonable amount of use, but it's not as high mileage as some of the bikes that we have on the fleet. Some of them have got 70,000 plus miles on them, still going strong. So a lot of that is very standard FJR 1300 stuff. I said we'd come back to this little green button here. If we push it, it goes blue. And then we have all of our blue lights running around the front. And the two on the back as well and we actually have two modes where we have the white lights as well on the front for even more visibility of the bike so there we go a quick look around the blood bike spec fjr 1300 since i started volunteering i've done probably a thousand miles on this bike it is super comfortable really easy to ride really enjoy riding it and being able to not only enjoy riding, but also be able to help the NHS with critical and emergency supplies is something that's really rewarding to do. If you're interested in joining up, please get in touch with your local Blood Bikes group. I'm always looking for volunteers. I hope you liked this little look around the Blood Bike Spec FJR 1300. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below. Check back next week for more new content. Until then, get out on those bikes, enjoy them, ride safely. Weather's starting to turn now and the roads are getting slippy. But be safe out there. I'll see you again really soon.